Well, promise and peril. August 14th marks the 75th anniversary of Social Security, but don't celebrate too fast. Adding to the beating of the deficit drums, there's talk that Social Security may make it through the midterm elections only to be done in by the Deficit Commission. Are they really scheming to privatize the program in December when lame duck Congress members are out to look for their Wall Street jobs? Next, I'll don that privatizer Social Security worry hat and ask our correspondent Dean Baker to respond. But first, go back 75 years. We can never insure 100% of the population against 100% of the hazards and vicissitudes of life, but we have tried to frame a law which will give some measure of protection to the average citizen and to his family against the loss of a job and against poverty-stricken old age. Dean, welcome back to Grit TV. That was then. This is now. Now Barack Obama has convened a commission on fiscal responsibility, which he says should discuss all possible options. He's put everything on the table with respect to our finances, deficits, and that includes Social Security. We'll get to the threat faced uh, facing us in just a second. But before we do, I want to get you to answer some of the basic questions we hear in this debate. The first, Dean, and I want your response, is that we're in economic hard times. We've simply got to bite the bullet. Well, th th this one's close to crazy. We're in economic hard times because we don't have enough demand in the economy. We need more spending. And somehow the idea that we're going to be better off if people spent less, uh, you know, go, go down to your corner store and ask them if they're going to hire more people if they sell less. Go down to a factory. I mean, this doesn't make any sense. It makes zero sense. It might make someone feel good that they're being morally rectitude. It's moral rectitude to cut someone's budget. But that's not going to help the economy. All right. So what about the aging population, those baby, boom, baby boomers retiring? We just can't sustain them anymore. They'll break the system. Well, it's kind of funny, you know, Senator Simpson, uh, Wyoming, former Wyoming Senator Alan Simpson, is a co-chair of the Deficit Commission, uh, went on a little tirade. He was being interviewed, and he, he said, well, we didn't know about the baby boomers. Well, of course, we've known about the baby boomers a long time. You know, it was 80 million kids that were born between 46 and 64. We weren't really able to keep it secret. Um, the program structure to take that into account and the projections from the trustees that just came out last week show that if we do absolutely nothing, the program could pay all benefits through the year 2037, which, you know, better or worse, that's going to be through most of the baby boomers' lifetime. So, you know, we basically have the baby boomers taken care of. There's longer-term issues with the program, but these are really relatively distant problems. All right, so if we can't get you on that, what about the deficit? Capital D, everybody worried on Capitol Hill. Um, Three-quarters of the problem, they say, could be solved if we simply change Social Security and privatize a lot of it. Well, it's, it's a little bit harebrained. We have a designated tax for Social Security. We all know this. We, you know, we get our paycheck every week. We get 6.2 percentage points taken out for Social Security. Our employer also kicks in 6.2 percentage points. And if you cut Social Security and leave that tax in place, in effect, what we're saying is we're playing a little trick on everyone. We're just telling them it's a Social Security tax. We're actually using it for the war in Afghanistan or, you know, whatever you want to say. But we're, in effect, lying to people, which, you know, we could do. I don't think it's good policy, you know, it's, but that's, in effect, what it amount to. All right. So would you just go for a raise in the age of retirement? We're all healthier. People like to work. They're working longer even without people forcing them to. Well, two points to understand about that. First off, we have raised the retirement age. So people running around talking about, you know, how, how much life expectancies increase. First off, most of that's at birth. So it's not that really isn't relevant for Social Security, or at least not in any big way. But we have raised the retirement age. It's currently the normal retirement age is 66. That's how long you have to work to get full benefits. And that's rising to 67 for workers who retire after 2022. So it has already gone up. Now, the proposal that many have is we're going to raise that further. And two points I'll make on that. One is that we're going to be hitting a lot of people that have already been badly hit by the collapse of the housing bubble. So people in their 40s and 50s, we know they have very little money. They're not likely to accumulate much. And what they had in their home, in their, their 401ks, if they had them, has largely disappeared with the economic downturn. The other point is a lot of people, you know, I have a desk job. I'll be happy to work till 70. You know, I like it and good health. I, you know, why not? 
But most people, that's not true of. And we just did a study that finds that almost 50% of older workers, people over 58, are working at jobs that are either physically demanding or in difficult conditions, like they have to sit outside all day long. So asking these people to work till 70, you know, I think that's probably unreasonable. Well, that sounds like you've wrapped it all up for me. It makes perfect sense. There are, though, are, however, a lot of worries about these guys. This is the fiscal commission, the co-chairs. These are the folks that a lot of people are saying could, no matter what you say, do Social Security in this fall. Take a look. You, you have two choices with Social Security. Either, you either raise the payroll tax or decrease the benefits or start affluence testing. Try that one on. Man, oh man, there's a big one. But the rest of it is BS. And if the people are really ingesting BS all day long, their grandchildren will be picking grit with the chickens. Now, this country is going to go to the bow-wows unless we deal with the entitlements mm -hmm. and Social Security and Medicare. I'll have the same problem from the left when we start talking about entitlements. But we have to tell the truth. So here you have right and left saying we've got to grapple with Social Security. Why are you and others so worried about these guys? Well, I didn't see right and left. I saw right. Um, you, the, the arguments they're making are simply misleading. I mean, again, look at the trustees' report. They say it's fine through the year 2037. Now, if we do nothing, even at that point, it could still pay 75% of scheduled benefits, which I should point out in 2037, that would be higher. The scheduled benefit rises year by year, so that'd be higher than what people get today. Now, to fully fund it, you could do things like raise the cap. We only tax uh, wages up to 106000 uh, you could raise that cap. That will get more money. And, you know, far enough out, sure, I don't see a big problem if you raise the, the tax somewhat. We raised it in the past. Um, they, you know, in the 80s, it was raised by two and a half percentage points. Economy didn't collapse. In fact, I go around the country and I ask people, what are the bad things that happened in the 80s? Never once has anyone said the increase in Social Security taxes. But you've got so, this decision you know, coming down from the commission about what should be done in December, right after, not before, the midterms. That has a lot of people afraid that you're going to have lame duck congressmen and women, I guess, looking to their next jobs in Wall Street and maybe doing what perhaps you don't want but Wall Street wants, which is hand over a whole lot of investments to their hands. Well, hand over investments and certainly cut benefits. I think the, the latter is the more likely. But yeah, I mean, people should be worried about this. These are the most important social programs. They're talking about going after Social Security, quite possibly Medicare as well. And in principle, that's what we have elections about. But what these guys want to do is they want to wait till after the election, have a Congress, many of whom were just voted out of office, then make decisions about the structure of these programs for possibly decades into the future. This is, you know, this is not the way a democracy is supposed to work. People should be outraged. And am I right in hearing a rumor that it was Monica Lewinsky that saved us from the last Democratic plan to privatize Social Security? Well, uh, yes, I think that's very well put. Uh, we know from, you know, people within the administration at the time, the Clinton administration, that he was actively considering plans to privatize Social Security. Those got thrown in the wastebasket when the Lewinsky scandal blew up because uh, Clinton's presidency was at stake and he had to turn to his base, the unions, the, the women's groups, the African American community, groups that are all very heavily dependent, very strong supporters of Social Security. So his plans for privatizing Social Security got thrown in the garbage. So I've always said that, you know, we should have Monica's blue dress and the Smithsonian as the, the dress that saves Social Security. I'm not sure I'm reassured. But Dean, thanks so much for joining us. Dean Baker is our regular economics correspondent here at Grit TV. There's more coming up. First, this little word from billionaires for social insecurity. My uncle Peter G. Peterson is inside right now in a secret meeting planning on how to steal your social security checks. Hooray! The important thing to remember is that we're all in it. 